Now, gravitational potential energy is not the only type of potential energy. We can actually also store potential energy in a spring. So let's consider what happens when we first of all put a mass onto the spring and then when we extend the spring further. We'll look at how much work we have to do in order to do this. Okay, so when I put place my mass on my spring, my spring extends and I have a new equilibrium position right here. And at this equilibrium position, the spring force, which is pulling the spring back up to its old equilibrium position when it didn't have the mass on it, is equal to the weight force of the mass which is pulling it downwards. So I've got a weight force downwards mg and a spring force which ends up being upwards and it's described by Hooke's law, F is equal to minus kx. The minus here is because it's a restoring force, it acts back towards the equilibrium position. Now let's consider what would happen if I want to extend the spring away from this equilibrium position. I need to do work in this case to move the mass from some initial position, let's call it x subscript i for x initial, to some final position, let's call it x subscript f. Now in order to calculate the work, I'm going to need to use my equation that the work done is equal to f dot s, where s is the change in displacement. Now what's difficult about applying this equation in this case, as opposed to the gravitational case, is that my force actually depends on my displacement. The force is given by minus kx, instead of just being a constant and independent of where I'm actually considering it. So because of this, what I need to do is break my, for my extension up into lots of little components. And over each of those little components, the mass moves a very small distance, let's call it dx. So say this is position x, then a little bit further down is a position x plus dx. And between x and dx, I can assume that my force is constant. If that's not true, then choose a smaller dx to make it true. Okay, so let's calculate how much work I have to do on my spring to move the mass from the location x to the final location x plus dx. So in this case, the work is equal to f dot s, which is equal to minus kx times, now to be my final position minus my initial position, so it'll be x plus dx minus x. So this will be minus kx dx. So now I know how much work I need to do on the mass to move it through a little increment. So what I'm going to do is split my extension from some initial location, x initial, to some final location, x final up into lots of little increments, and each of those little increments has a length, an extension, dx. And to calculate the total work, I just need to sum the work done to move it through each of those little increments individually. Now if I'm going to sum, that's actually just integrating it. Integrating it is literally doing lots of very small, doing a sum over very small increments. So my sum over increments dx from x initial to x final, I can write as the work is equal to the integral from x initial to x final of what we just calculated, minus kx dx. So I'm now just doing a simple integral. So when I do this integral, I end up with minus kx squared on 2, and I need to evaluate that at x final and x initial. So this is equal to minus kx final squared on 2 plus kx initial squared on 2. So that tells me about the amount of work that I have to do to extend this spring. So just to recap, as this is the first time you've seen an integration set up in this way, and it's a very important technique, we're going to have a look at this in a few different representations. So what we're trying to do is to calculate the work done by the spring force, f is equal to minus kx, as the spring moves from some initial position 
here to some final position here. And the difficulty here is that the force is different at different places. So at x initial, we've got an upwards force like that. And then at x final, we've got a larger upwards force as xf is greater than x initial. And these forces are upwards as the spring is moved away downwards, away from its equilibrium position. And so this is a restoring force. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is break this movement from x initial to x final into a whole lot of little segments. So here's our mass at x initial. Here it is at x final. And we consider just one place here, x, and then we can consider another place nearby, x plus dx. So this change in height between these two here is dx, and we choose dx small so that f equals minus kx is constant over dx. And we can always do that. If it's not true, then we choose a slightly smaller dx. So then what we can do is calculate the work done from x to dx. And when we do that, so the work done is equal to f dot s. And the force we've said is constant, it's minus kx. And the change in the displacement, the distance it moves through is dx. So this is the work done to move at this very little increment dx. Now the total work is the sum of the works work done to move um, through each e increment from x initial to x final. So what we want to do is the sum of the minus kx dx, and this is from x is equal to x initial to x is equal to x final. But because dx is a very small increment, this is a sum with lots of little parts. So this is literally just what integration is. So this is the integral of minus kx dx from x initial to x final. So that's why this integral sign looks a bit like an s, because it is literally a sum over small increments. Okay, so now we can solve this integral, and this will be equal to minus kx squared on 2, because we're just integrating something which is x, and then we've still got k, which is a constant, from x initial to x final. So this is equal to minus kx final squared on 2 plus kx initial squared on 2. Now, the other way we can think about this is to think about drawing a little graph of it. If we were to plot a graph with force here and displacement here, we want to do this where the displacements go from x initial up to x final. Okay, so let's start by considering the force here is given by minus kx initial. So we can, let's draw the magnitude of the force. And here we've got the height is given by kx initial. And then this width is dx. And then we can consider the next increment, which is xi plus dx. And there we'll have a just slightly higher force and so on. We consider each increment and we'll end up with something like this. And then the work done is equal to the area under F versus S graph. So we'll end up with a straight line going up like this. And to find the area under a graph, we can just integrate it. So we'd end up with the same integral if we considered it graphically like this as well. Now, often we'll be considering the case where we start from equilibrium. So where 
x initial is equal to 0 and we'll say x final is equal to x. So this is just considering the work that we need to move a mass from any point 0 on the spring down to any final point x. So in this case we've got that the work done, which we've calculated over here, so the work done is equal to minus k x final squared, so that's x squared on 2, plus k x initial squared, which is 0 squared on 2, so that's equal to minus k x squared on 2. So that's the work done by the spring force, so the change in potential energy, which is equal to the negative of the work done, is equal to kx squared on 2. So that's the amount of potential energy that you store in a spring as you move it from its equilibrium point to a position x away from the equilibrium point.